Um, hey everyone, welcome to today's MPG Primer. All right, so today I have the pleasure of introducing two wonderful um, individuals, uh, Taisha Hendrickson and Melissa Shimento. So I'll first uh, introduce Taisha. So Taisha is the Director of Outreach, Engagement, and Communications at Count Me In, or CMI, where her main focus is on the development of comprehensive outreach strategies to effectively engage and communicate with patients and partners within the cancer communities that CMI serves. Taisha joined CMI in August 2022 and has since then developed a full outreach engagement and communications team to focus on outreach and engagement efforts within CMI. Her career's focus has been on utilizing organizational and educational skills to build and enhance marketing and communication goals across various organizations. Taisha has also applied these skills to support mission-driven organizations in their efforts to become leaders of change. And now I'll introduce uh, Melissa. So Melissa is the manager of media and communications at Count Me In. Melissa reports to the director of outreach, engagement and communications, OEC, or Taisha, I believe. <laughs> and um, she works closely alongside members of the OEC and extended CMI team to develop digital and printed content that is representative of the cancer communities that CMI serves. Her work is reflected across CMI and partnering Organization, organization social media, Broad and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute press releases and international event support, as well as other activities. Prior to joining CMI in 2022, Melissa worked in outreach and public re relations for other nonprofits and mission-driven organizations, most notably the New England Donor Services, which is an organization that supports thousands of donor families each year and encourages millions of residents to register as organ and tissue donors. And today the two of them are going to be talking about patient engagement and genomic research using social media to create a community. Um, and just a quick note, um, we're going to ask to put the questions at the end, but if you're on Zoom, feel free to add them into the chat and we'll address them at the end. All right, thank you so much. All right, good morning, everyone. And thank you for that introduction. So I will dive right into, um, as mentioned, our presentation today will be focused on patient engagement and genomic research, particularly as it relates to Count Me In and using social media to create community. And we had a slide to introduce ourselves, but that was love, done pretty lovely uh, a few minutes ago. So I won't reiterate um, you know, who we are, but here's a slide just in case. Um, and I will dive into Count Me In. So Count Me In over the years has become, I think I would say a leader in really emphasizing um, the model of engaging patients directly um, when it comes to research and enabling them to you know, submit their samples and share their voices um, in cancer research. Over the years, we have established 11 projects. Um, these projects have been, like I said, focused on cancer um, research studies and really bringing the patient's um, voice into research and enabling them to be a part of the process um, from the very beginning. So direct to patient engagement is what makes Count Me unique and making sure that our patients' experiences and their journeys are reflected in the research that we do on a daily basis. So going through the list um, here, we have launched projects in various cancers and cancer communities. And I will flip to the next slide to show a timeline of when we launched these various projects. So starting in 2015, we launched our flagship project in metastatic breast cancer. And then going from there, we then dived into angiosarcoma, metastatic prostate cancer, stomach cancer, brain tumor, osteosarcoma. And then we launched the Count Me In, we call it our PanCan, where we accepted patients from all cancer types to participate in Count Me In. And then colorectal cancer, and then in September 2022, we relaunched a version of osteosarcoma and brought on um, Lyomar sarcoma patients. And then most recently, we launched a project in pediatric hepatocellular carcinoma. To date, we have over 12,000 patients who have joined Count Me In. I think this is really reflective 
of the response that we have had over the years where patients really want to be involved and engaged when it comes to research. We've heard from patients that they don't want to just be considered a number um, you know, in a registry. They want to be involved. They want to make sure that you know, their, their samples are being shared and data is being collected. Um, and the unique aspect of what Count Me In does, we don't only gather data, but we share researchers everywhere. Um, and this is reflective in what we do where we share our information through CBioPortal and dbGaP and release that um, data. So two of our flagship projects, I would say, have been metastatic breast cancer and angiosarcoma. And the next slide will implement or show some of the examples of what some of the successes that we've had in both of these projects. Over 6,300 women and men um, have joined the metastatic breast cancer from all 50 states. This is a perfect graph that really shows the reach that we've had over the years within that project. Um, and knowing that we were able to capture patients from pretty much all over and bring them into the project as participants. And then angiosarcoma being a very rare cancer type, um, the fact that we were able to um, enroll over 640 patients into that project to me was a very a huge success for Count Me In, knowing how rare that cancer um, is. So that was a little bit of a background on Count Me In, and I'm sure you're wondering, well, how does this work? So what we've identified over the years is that, you know, the old way in which patients were either introduced to research was through hospital institutions. And we wanted to change that, you know, Count Me In really came on board to, like I said in the beginning, really bring patients in so they're directly engaging in with research and not just submitting their samples and, you know, clinical data and not really knowing where that information is going. So Count Me In's model, our direct-to-patient model, has really changed um, the world of research in many ways where we're bringing patients in from the very beginning. You know, all the projects that we develop are developed with patients. We have focus group discussions where we're bringing patients in. We talk about things from website development to material development to colors. Um, we've learned over the years that every cancer community is different. There are unique aspects of the, these cancer communities and we respect that in various ways in making sure that we're reflecting those nuances um, across cancer communities in the work that we do. So in going through the steps where a patient um, can participate, um, step one, they provide consent for the study. Um, step two, they let us know a little bit more about their medical history and where they've been treated. Um, and as you can see this, you know, between step one and step two, it's really just a matter of, you know, 10 to 20 minutes um, overall in, in getting them started in that process. And then step three, is really the part of the process where we learn more about their overall journey and experience. So we're not just collecting you know, samples and data, but we're getting a better understanding of how their experience played a role, of course, into um, their whole journey and how that is reflected in the data that we're gonna be collecting. And then step four, we actually send them a saliva and blood sample kit. We send it in the mail. Um, that's a huge convenience for, for patients and participants. And then we ask that they, you know, send that sample back into us. And all of that is free of charge. We're not asking them to pay for anything um, in that process. And over time, we stay in contact with our participants, providing regular updates about the study, sharing discoveries. Um, lessons learned over the years is that patients want to hear from us. They want to know what's going on with their samples. They want to know what's going on with the, the project and the data that we've been able to um, you know, receive over time. And it's really important for them to stay abreast in, what hap in what's happening in the project. So we've been really intentional over the years, in, um, and especially you know, since I came on and, and Melissa came on, and thinking of ways that we can stay in touch with patients and making sure that they're updated and involved um, and engaged. 
So what happens to the samples that are the information that's provided to a project? Um, so as I mentioned before, we send kits to participants for them to send their samples, saliva samples and blood samples back to us. Um, and the saliva samples, you know, tell us about the participants inherited or germline DNA and are necessary for sequencing the tumor samples. And all sequencing is done through GP here at the Broad. And the surveys tell us more about the participants and their unique experiences, which, like I mentioned before, this is one of the unique aspects of Count Me In um, in the research that we do and is reflected um, you know, here because patients want to share their story. They want to let people know, you know what they've gone through um, along their cancer journeys. Medical records, their medical history is provided to us um, for us to you know, analyze, get a better sense around their history of procedures and treatments and other clinical data that is valuable for our research. And then blood samples can be used as inherited or germline DNA sample. And we've often found that it holds the clues to understanding um, tumor DNA. And then in some of our projects, we do request tissue samples. Um, this is mostly reflected in our osteosarcoma and leiomyosarcoma projects, um, where participants are providing tumor DNA for genomic sequencing. So I, we have a quick video um, to give a little bit more of a in-depth understanding um, and some background into Count Me In and how this all came about. And um, it would feature our former director, Dr. Nick Hill Wagley, um, who also was one of the founders for Count Me In and uh, oncologist and who was the primary investigator for our metastatic breast cancer project. It started with a mouse click. As we enroll more and more patients, um, we start to see patterns emerging. And now, Count Me In is changing how researchers study cancer. Over 6,000 patients with cancer have, have clicked Count Me In. When thousands of them sign up for a project, uh, you, you realize you can do a study that, that never could have been done before. Nick Hill Wagley is the director of Count Me In and an oncologist and cancer researcher at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. He says Count Me In is a nonprofit that offers a new model of patient partnered research. Patients can go online, click Count Me In, and then they're sent kits to provide DNA samples and asked about their medical history. Patients can also give researchers copies of medical records and access to stored tumor tissue. The information is collected, de identified, and then made available to researchers worldwide. These are things like um, their experiences with cancer, what treatments they've received, their own tissue samples or their saliva. Um, and all of this is really invaluable to being able to make discoveries in cancer and develop new treatments or treatment strategies. It started with the Metastatic Breast Cancer Project, then they added projects for angiosarcoma, metastatic prostate cancer, and stomach and esophageal cancer. Even more projects are planned. Count Me In is stewarded by Dana-Farber, the Broad Institute, the Emerson Collective, and the Biden Cancer Initiative. But at the heart of it is the patients themselves, who not only provide the samples and information, but are also key to designing every aspect of each project. I think what we've heard from patients is that they want to be involved. They want to help. They want to um, leave a legacy, or they want to be able to contribute something that only they uniquely have, uh, and I think it's empowering for a lot of people. All right, I think, you know, Dr. Wagley pretty much summed up all of the information that I shared um, prior to this video and really emphasizing, you know, the unique aspect of, of what Count Me In is doing with patients within um, the cancer community and making sure that we are conducting research to change the future of cancer. I think that's the, the goal of, of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh. Oh. 
to get to the next slide. It started with a So diving a little bit more into the world of outreach, engagement, and communications. Um, I know that was just a part of what we do, but it's also um, a key aspect to, you know, making sure that we're sustaining engagement with participants, but then, uh, you know, bringing patients into um, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, which involves us listening to communities. And I consider these to be the four pillars of our team and really focusing on um, these aspects and making sure that we're working with trusted advocacy and community-based organizations, connecting with patients, loved ones, caregivers who are willing in, to participate in shaping research and remaining available for feedback regularly. And then this model really shows, I refer to it as our science of engagement and you know, overall life cycle um, that goes into um, a project as it relates to how we're building outreach engagement and communication strategies around each project. And each project is, we look at them as individual projects. So the strategies that we develop really focus on that particular cancer community, knowing the differences across cancer communities. So it involves strategic development, and then we go into generating awareness where we're working with advocacy groups, we're working with patients, we're working with patient advocates directly to really bring more awareness around the projects that we're leading. And then building community, which is a key component to our work knowing that you know a lot of what we do caught me in is primarily digital based so being able to connect more with the patient community is key and important to to our work and then educational impact we see that as as a part of you know being able to provide resources to patients around research we know that in various communities you know particularly marginalized or minority populations um, you know, they may not have access to various resources. Um, so being able to have some impacts around um, educational information around genetic research and um, the components involved in that is, you know, a key component to what we do. And then sustaining engagement, you know, making sure our participants are with us every step of the way throughout the research. Um, you know, we want to avoid them feeling like they're just sending their samples. And you know they're not hearing from us after that, so we are very intentional about you know really um, crafting ways for us to maintain engagements with our patients along the way, and sharing outcomes. You know, giving back to participants is something that we have been wanting to do for for many years, and I would say you know over the past two years we've actually been able to to do this in a way that is you know sustainable, um, practically within the osteosarcoma and Lyomar sarcoma projects where we've, you know, rallied together with the PIs and we've been able to actually develop shared learnings is what we call them, where we're giving back information to patients um, based on the um, samples that they have submitted. Not technically ind individualized clinical um, diagnosis or data, but more along the lines of, you know, here's information that you provided to us and here's what we've been able to find. And then, like I mentioned before, we released that data to researchers everywhere. It's the identified um, for researchers to access, um, you know, for them to utilize and, you know, accelerate the pace of future treatments and discoveries. So we're not harnessing that. We're not keeping that to ourselves. We know that we can't do this alone. So being able to share that data out um, and knowing that researchers have access to that um, has been really, really um, impactful. So we have one more video or second video. We have a, one more video towards the end. Um, but this is really reflective of the patient and patient voice and um, just giving an example of why patients have decided to be counted. When my daughter was around 13 years old, 
I was putting her to bed one night and she said, Mom, I know you have breast cancer and I know Granny has breast cancer. I want you to know that I'm going to get breast cancer too, but I'm okay with that. No. 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 To know that the work that I do now and the work that people on the project are doing now um, will help my daughters hopefully not have to face a life-threatening um, situation from cancer is, is really the best that I can hope for. It's really for my kids. I have two daughters and I really think the information could really impact their world. I don't want my daughter to get this um, disease. Hopefully, you know, my son's children and my son himself never have to deal with this disease and maybe that's something that'll come about from the research with Count Me In. I think watching that every single time, it definitely touches me in a special way, but really, you know, brings back um, to us in the perspective of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and the why around it. When my daughter was around 13 years old, Sorry. I, <laughs> I have, never goes, okay. So I am going to transition this portion of the presentation over to Melissa to dive a little bit more into our social media and just overall aspects of what we do there and creating a community. from your communities that that's something they're interested in because of course nowadays a lot of projects are doing exactly that and it's kind of becoming standard practice to give back individual results yes so i have to say that this was a most recent venture that we it may have been maybe about two months ago we released our first Share Learnings letter um, within the osteosarcoma and Lyomar sarcoma project. Um, our plan is to do some follow-up surveys with participants to get a better understanding around, you know, whether or not the information shared um, was presented in a way that they can understand. A lot of work went into that, but it's always good to hear back from participants around that. Um, so we're looking forward to, to getting some of that feedback in the next few months around this, our first venture into shared learnings and, you know, taking that feedback and adjusting or pivoting um, how we do that whole process any way needed going forward. Um, one question about your step number three, where you are collecting experiences about cancer and all. So everything is unique. It will be unique from individual point of view. So how is data used ethically versus medically? How is this data used? This, what are you actually collecting? Are these statements? Are these questionnaires? And how are they used? Yeah, so it's it's a survey. It's a questionnaire. So in, in building out that survey, um, a lot of you know time went into working with various PIs, oncologists across Dana Farber, as well as patients, and you know really honing in on what are those key questions that we need to ask at that step to get a better sense around their experience. And I think you know how we're using that um, information historically has been how we then um, drive further projects that we're doing, or how we structure or build. Um, projects or future projects. So over the years, Kamin has really taken that aspect of the data to, you know, understand the patient experience, but then also utilize that data, which is also shared to researchers. So we don't hold on to that either um, to build or, or structure um, our projects around that. And then I think the other aspect too, and I, I mentioned this a few times before, is, is you know, patients want to share. Like they, they just want to be heard and giving them the opportunity to do that alone in itself means so much to them. All right, Melissa. Thank you, Taisha. Hi everyone. Um, so just to introduce myself again, my name is Melissa Shimento. Um, I am Count Me In's Media and Communications Manager. And today um, the, the more focus of our presentation for the last half year will be about how we use social media um, to 
directly connect with cancer patients. What we have actually found over the years through the practices um, that we follow on social media, which I'll elaborate on in a bit, is, is actually turns um, to be one of the most key outreach areas that we have due to um, the digital nature of the digital and remote nature of our opportunity to participate in research. So as Taisha described earlier, historical approaches to cancer research have largely been through academic institutions where patients are being treated, um, where CountMeIn's model is digital and remote and able to be accessed by anybody in the United States and Canada who have ever been um, diagnosed with cancer. So organically, even prior to my joining Count Me In, we have seen that social media is one of the greatest avenues for us to follow to reach patients. And that happens um, through different ways, which I said I'll elaborate on. Um, but just to give you an understanding now, patients, especially rare cancer patients, often turn, turn to Facebook groups and other kind of online forums to try to find more unique information about what they're experiencing. And when Count Me In has been presented as an opportunity to participate in research, we have seen that our participants kind of organically share that opportunity um, on their own will. So the platforms that we professionally manage for Count Me In are Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, now known as X, as I'm sure some of you are aware, um, and most recently, Threads. So these are some examples of what our professional social media content tends to look like for Count Me In. Um, on the left here, you'll see this is a what we refer to as a participant testimonial that we've created by working directly with this participant um, to share his voice, his story, and his experience in participating with Count Me In. Um, we have found that these participant testimonials are largely the greatest reach that we have um, because it's something that, in this case, JJ himself can take his story, his ad that we have here, share it on his own network as well and in those private Facebook groups that we don't always necessarily have appropriate access to. Um, we also work with other organizations. Um, on the right of your screen, you'll see an image of a woman named Kareen um, with the words, I count on the front. And we've created that campaign um, and others like Kareen with an organization called I Had Cancer, which is a large scale digital cancer community group. So it was a paid um, sponsorship that we entered with them, but we find that leveraging other groups um, following is necessary for us to continue to kind of expand our digital reach beyond our own kind of core groups. And then the other opportunity that we use to engage our community, particularly on social media, is doing things as simple as utilizing the comments section on different posts. So we welcome real, raw, honest experiences about what it's like to live with cancer, uh, especially for marginalized groups. And we invite them to share their perspective um, in this case, it was for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This was one of our um, post campaigns to use our comment section to get it off your chest. And what are, what are things that you wish other people truly knew about what it was like to either have a cancer diagnosis or to live with cancer? And we find that opening the door for those types of conversations, um, albeit in the comment section, are extremely effective and generating a sense of community. An area of Count Me In's core value is also to be, is to be inclusive and also transparent. Um, so when we think about being inclusive, we 
try to structure our outreach strategies with the small but mighty group that we have to, to include those who may not speak English as a first language. And we have dedicated outreach specialists um, that focus specifically on Hispanic and Latino outreach. So we try to regularly coordinate to make sure that our campaigns, our webinars, our information, our print materials, our websites are available in a minimum of both English and Spanish. And when it comes to transparency, particularly on social media, we generate posts that show kind of what's happening behind the scenes. So anytime we have a new staff member join, we share that with our social media followers. In this case, it was Ariane. She's a project manager um, for our osteosarcoma and myosarcoma projects. Um, and we shared why she joined Count Me In, what her focus is. And we found that our participants and our followers really appreciate having some faces to the mission that we talk about a lot. Um, we also use social media as an opportunity to give back. So we receive, as you saw earlier in the chart that I showed, um, a lot of analytics and a lot of information from our social media followers. And we try to engage them as we can, but also give back in terms of, we do giveaways um, and the way that we structure our give giveaways with the swag that we are lucky to have is um, by having them comment emojis that best reflect what their experience is with cancer. And this not only allows us to give back to them by choosing winners at random, um, but also lets us know what their direct connection is um, to cancer, which then allows us to tailor messages that are more representative of their needs. And what we see in return from these various efforts is what we refer to in media or marketing as user-generated content. So as I mentioned earlier, even before Tasha and I and the rest of our team were really dedicated to this space for Count Me In. We saw this organically, that participants, due to the remote nature of our research, um, take images and are proud to share that they're included in this um, type of way. So we see time and time again through all of these examples here are of our followers who have tagged us when they received their kit. They tag us when they receive an email, when they receive the shared learning letters um, that Tasha had mentioned. They are really honored and, sh and proud to, sh to invite others um, to change the future of cancer. And these are just some more examples of the type of user-generated content that we see. So we ask for our key partners to share our mission. We certainly ask it of the Broad from Communications, from GP. Um, we certainly ask it of Dana-Farber and our other key partners. And also on a local scale, um, the community advocacy groups that we work with. We are regularly in the habit of providing them what we call copy-ready content, where the ads are, have been created, the social media captions have been formatted appropriately for them. We try to make it as easy as possible for them to receive the information that we would love if they could share with their communities um, as easy as possible so they can post it, tag us, and help us generate more awareness for our call to action across the different projects that we work on. So here are some examples for our osteosarcoma on the left here. Um, that is a rare children's um, cancer research organization who tagged us about our osteosarcoma project. Um, 
we ask our groups for our colorectal cancer project to share information specifically about our colorectal cancer research project with their community. So it's relevant. And these are just some more examples from, of that effort. And what we have seen, um, although we, there were organic strides made prior to um, the development of the OEC team, we have seen tenfold, I guess you could say, from the percentages here, that it has made a tremendous difference having dedicated communication specialists, outreach specialists, Hispanic and Latino specialists, um, and having that work be reflected on social media. So these are some key metrics that we follow. And if we compare it to prior to the development of the OEC team, which was back more towards 2020, to fast forward to the past two years where we have um, really been actively underway in our outreach strategies, we have seen our social media impressions have increased by over 245%. So that is those social media users viewing the content that, we, that we've put out. Engagements is up nearly 700%. Um, and that is those who comment, those who share, those who react. That is a more, um, that is a more engaged person than the impressions, which are just those who view the information. We've seen an over 800% increase in link, link clicks, which by and large are the call to action is to click on our various um, research websites. And the engagement rate um, per impression, so that's how many people are really per view taking the action to click, is up over 100%. For our total audience, uh, for Count Me In across the various platforms from Facebook to Threads is almost 5,000, which to some may be um, on the smaller side of a social media following. But again, we're pretty much just getting started if we think about the whole life cycle of, of our uh, science of outreach. Uh, but, that being said, we have seen a tremendous increase in our audience growth, and that is through both our organic um, posts that I've shown examples of and also our paid advertising that we do, which unfortunately, I don't have time to get into that today. But if there are questions at the end about how we may use paid advertising, happy to go over that as well. Video views, I, I think, um, you know, it's obvious the growth that we have seen there. And I think that comes from having a dedicated social media person to share the videos that our team is working to create. So I think we all occasionally have the op opportunity to develop content and having a key person who is looking for to share that type of work um, is beneficial. And again, we've gone over that. Um, so before I actually turn it back over to Tasha briefly to wrap us up, this is a public service announcement that we had worked on with a group called Stand Up to Cancer, which is a very, um, it's a global cancer uh, support from research to awareness um, advocacy group at a very large scale, worked with us on a public service announcement a couple of years ago. And this um, PSA has been seen billions of times through TV commercials, um, even just to audio alone on radio, uh, radio commercial airtimes. It's been on social media in other ways as well. And um, having this digital compo component to generate um, outreach was really beneficial for us, especially when we launched um, For All Cancers in 2018. So thank you for listening. I'll turn it back over to Tisha and um, we'll take questions if we still have time at the end.
All right. So I think we have a few more slides. Um, this slide is, is really talking about our main engagement channels. Um, Melissa touched on a little bit more of the social side of things. Um, so digital opportunities for connection, um, re, you know, typically involves interactive discussion polls and webinar discussions going back to um, what I referenced earlier in providing participants with educational resources. Physician engagement is a huge aspect to what we do, um, engaging physicians directly to not only you know, share our information with patients, but then also, you know, really tap into their expertise um, and then being able to, you know, grow awareness within their networks. Advocacy organizations and patient advocates, um, you know, they are the ones that have the deep connections within these cancer communities and they're, they're a huge aspect to what we do on a day-to-day -day basis because of their connections to communities. Um, so that's, that's a very important engagement channel that we have um, within our outreach um, team. And we consider them to be a part of our extended team, honestly, because of the work that they do. And we have been really intentional, um, you know, coming off of the pandemic and we're, we're still in the midst of COVID, but really trying to um, take advantage of ways that we can directly engage with patients through events and, and conferences. Um, and being able to participate um, externally in that way. And then overall, our community engagement is, you know, definitely an, an important component to, to what we do, where we're able to conduct listening tours, which generally involve us actually talking with patients um, on a one-to-one -one basis um, and making sure that we're staying abreast of, you know, what's happening in their um, cancer community. Um, newsletter communications, um, town halls, panel discussions um, are another example of how we continue to engage with, with cancer communities. And then looking ahead. So we are now in this phase of, you know, what's next for Count Me In. And we are, you know, continuing to, to grow our focuses within not only rare cancers, but then also exploring, you know, rare diseases on a whole, you know, and building our approach within that space so that we're able to, you know, further our, our model and, and being able to directly engage um, with the rare disease community as well. Um, one area of focus, of course, is the expansion of patient voice and experience. As we continue to expand our efforts within rare diseases, you know, also can think, thinking of ways in which we can um, grow within our um, a model of capturing um, the patient voice and experience, being able to, to engage um, in various ways um, through providers and patient advocacy groups. And in part, just making sure that we are maintaining connections the same way that we have done over the years and we've been known to do um, at, in Count Me In. And then we have been in the midst of, you know, really taking our outreach and engagement model and, you know, I would say kind of creating a playbook of what we do so that we can provide these services to external research um, researchers and organizations. So this is all a part of, you know, some of the next steps of Count Me In. Um, where, you know, we're considering um, expanding into the rare disease space, but we're also, you know, thinking of how we can take our expertise and, and share with other organizations for their own research um, initiatives as well. And that wraps up our presentation today, and now we can open up the room for any questions. Oops. Thank you both so much. Um, I'm wondering what are the bottlenecks to you having 10 times as many participants? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there, there are different challenges, you know, that come along the way, um, you know, being able to you know, have that individualized experience with participants is not as it was in the very beginning when Count Me In was launched. Um, but 
I do feel confident, you know, within the expansion of our team, you know, that is our focus. You know, how do we remain engaged with patients? And, you know, that was the whole purpose of forming this outreach engagement and communications team um, over the past two years and really having dedicated people on the team to to make sure that we're, you know, retaining engagement, we're sustaining participation um, from patients and just making sure that, you know, they're they're with us throughout the lifetime of the project. So of course in research there are challenges, <laughs> um, you know, operational challenges, but um, I think, you know, as the team continues to grow and expand and really, you know, take the lessons learned over the years and make sure that we're taking that feedback and applying it to what we do. So for example, if your team was twice the size, would you get twice as many signups or what, yeah, what would it, what does it take to get more people on board? It takes a lot. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's, it's a huge effort. Um, and I think it's, it's really dependent on the cancer community. So every cancer project, like I said, is different. Um, we have specific focuses in, in like for, in, for example, colorectal cancer, there is a, a specific focus or cohort um, on the Black African-American community. Um, so that alone is an effort in itself and making sure that we're reaching that community, knowing that you know, there are some levels of mistrust when it comes to research within that community and, and moving past those barriers and, and challenges um, and bringing them into participating in the studies. Um, so I think it's, it varies across, you know, our studies. It's not the same. Um, but the good thing about what we, as for our team, the structure of our team is we have dedicated project managers. So every project has its own team. And I think that's what allows for us to um, provide those projects with the attention that it needs or the individualized attention that participants need. Um, so we'll be transitioning to the MPG seminar very shortly. Um, just wanted to finally ask about, you know, building that team. You, you mentioned before we started about potential positions you have open. I was wondering if you could just spend about a minute or so talking about that. Sure. Uh, so we do have a couple openings at the moment. Um, as Tisha mentioned, we're looking to expand potentially into rare disease. And so we're looking for actually a business development manager to help us analyze and enter that space. Um, Count Me In's model has been historically for cancer research, and we've essentially become experts there, uh, but rare disease is would potentially be a different model and approach. Um, so we're looking for a business development manager there. And then we're also looking for a PhD level alliance manager to support the osteosarcoma and leiomyosarcoma um, research projects that came with a very specific grant under the um, Biden-Harris Cancer Moonshot Initiative and managing a lot of the details of the grant is pretty complex. And so we're looking for um, an alliance manager there. So if, and we're also, um, you know, kind of always have in the queue for project managers, project coordinators. Um, so definitely search Count Me In under, Joe, under um, the Broad's Jobs postings. And if you're interested or ever have questions, you can feel free to contact either of us. 